Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be doing something just a little bit different by combining tech and making into one video, which should be pretty interesting. So a few days before WWDC, John Prosser from Front Page Tech released these iPhone 13 CAD files. Now I'm sure some people saw the phrase CAD file and thought, okay, cool, we're gonna get some more shapes and outlines of what this phone will look like. And other people probably saw renders used of this and thought the phone was actually being announced. But the first thing I thought when I saw these files was, can I 3D print that? And that's exactly what I did. So I'm gonna show you how I printed it and we're gonna compare it to the current 12 Pro Max that I have with me. So there are two sizes of phones in the files and I figured the smaller one was like the size for the standard iPhone and like the smaller Pro model and the larger phone size was the size for the Pro Max. Also, I'll be sure to link the front page tech video down below the like button so you can check that out and also download the files if you're interested. So when you download these models, they are step files and you can't just drag this into a slicer like Prusa Slicer and print these files directly. You have to export these as STLs or OBJ files before you can actually 3D print them. And I did this using Fusion 360. When you open these up in Fusion, you see that there are a few different parts here. First, you have the actual body for the phone. You also have this mesh that represents the screen of the phone. And in the model for the larger phone, you have this section on the back that is supposed to represent something in the camera module. I'm not entirely sure what this section is or what this body is supposed to represent. I just ignored it for now since I could still print it perfectly fine without that piece. Now to make this easy, we just want to export the phone body itself. We don't want to worry about the mesh or that little piece inside the camera on the larger design. So what we're going to do is turn those other parts off and we can do this just by toggling the eyeball next to their name in the hierarchy on the left side. And now that just the main body is visible, I can go ahead and right click on that in the hierarchy on the left and hit export as STL. So now that we've exported the step file as an STL, we can go ahead and bring these files into any slicer that we want and print them out as we would any other model. You can check out my video right here where I talk about the process of actually printing a file that you have and how to slice it. But in this video, we're just gonna focus on converting the files from step to STL and then looking at the models once they're done printing. So I ended up printing both of these models out on the Prusa Mini using the Prusa Mint Red PLA since it was already loaded and I didn't feel like changing it. And as for print settings, I used a 0.2 millimeter layer height with a 10% infill, and I made sure supports were turned off. You'll see why this is important later on the larger phone model. So I ended up printing both of these models with the screens facing down on the build plate, and I think that's what caused some of the warping on the corners, but they still both came out looking great. This also is the reason that the front of the larger phone looks a little weird. The model had a little gap that had the mesh that I mentioned earlier filled in as a screen. And since I ignored the mesh, I ended up with a little gap in the print. So the entire front is essentially just a, a bridged layer. It looks a little rough, but it's still printed perfectly fine. And it works out for our purposes of just taking a look at it. And just initially holding these and taking a look at them, the size is pretty consistent with the sizing that we have now in the current iPhone 12 lineup. The smaller model is roughly the size of the 12 and the 12 Pro, while the larger model is roughly the same size as the 12 Pro Max. One thing I did notice, however, is that these models are a little bit thicker than my current iPhone 12 Pro Max. I figured that could either be a printing tolerance issue or these new phones could actually be a little bit thicker to accommodate a larger battery or something else that they might have in store for it. And just looking around the sides of the phone, you have the speakers and the charging port on the bottom of it. I assume this is also gonna be a lightning connector on the new phone given that it hasn't changed in years. I personally hope they switch USB-C so I can just carry on one cable for everything because I'm constantly forgetting my current phone charger and the battery life on the Pro Max is really good, but it does die eventually. And on the side, you also have the mute switch along with the power and volume buttons and a SIM card slot, which is what I assume the cutout is, since it's in roughly the same spot as where the SIM card slot is on my current phone. And there's nothing along the top of the phone, but what's really interesting on the top of the front side of the phone is what looks like a smaller notch, which is gonna be super nice. But what's also interesting about this model is the back of the phone. Now on the larger model, you can see that the camera bump is roughly the same size as the 12 Pro Max's camera bump. This doesn't surprise me since there are three models on the Pro version. But what I did find interesting was the camera bump on the smaller model. So instead of the cameras on the smaller model, which is, I assume, the regular iPhone 13 being stacked vertically like they are on the 12 and they have been on the 11, they are diagonal. So you have a camera bump that has a larger footprint than on the previous generation. I'm curious to see why they chose this layout, just because I wonder what they used the space around them for. I wonder if they're adding some more tech in the back of the standard sized phone, but I assume on the Pro model that is the same size, they will have a camera bump similar to the larger Pro Max, unless they do the same thing that they did with the iPhone 12, which is the Pro 
has one camera and the Pro Max has a different camera system. Now one thing I found interesting was that there were no models for a phone about the same size as the 12 mini. There were only the two sizes. Now I'm not sure if these are just the files that John had access to or if there won't be a mini model this year. I hope they don't discontinue the mini model of the iPhone, but there's no way to tell now. We'll have to just wait until September to see what happens. All right, so that's all I have for you today. It was super fun printing out these models and be able to check them out, like, you know, just hold them physically and see what the changes were and see if there's anything different that you can notice about them. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button down below. Also, while you're down there, go ahead and subscribe for more videos about tech, cameras, making, and any combination of those three. Thank you for watching. Here's my review of the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and here's a video that YouTube thinks that you're gonna like the best.